Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the full council meeting. I am Councillor Jeremy Cottam, Chairman of West March Council. This meeting is being live streamed via YouTube, so members of the public are able to follow the proceedings. Council members are present in the council chamber for this meeting. Any member of council who are in attendance remotely will be entitled to speak and ask questions uh, when invited to do so by myself. The officers in attendance are the Chief Executive Nigel Lynn, Executive Director for Resources Joseph Holmes, the Executive Director for Adult Social Care Paul Coe, and Executive Director for Place Claire Lawrence. Sarah Clark, the Monitoring Officer, will be the Legal Advisor to the meeting. I'm assisted by Ben Ryan, the Clerk to the meeting, and by Stephen Chard, who will be acting as a Zoom host. Welcome to the Honorary Alderman in attendance. Before we start this evening's meeting, I would like to take the opportunity to remind members that we are subject to the Council's Code of Conduct, which requires us to uphold certain standards, including, importantly, respect. Members across the Chamber may not always agree with one another, but I would ask that in our disagreements we endeavour to always be respectful of others' views. Also, I would like to ask the members of the public attending uh, this meeting, if they are here, please refrain from approaching councillors unless they are invited to do so. During the meeting, when a motion has been proposed and seconded, I will ask the monitoring officer to conduct the vote by a show of hands. So, moving to uh, agenda item one, apologies for absence. As the honour um, monitoring officer, any apologies for absence? Um, Thank you, Chairman. We have received apologies from um, Councillor Anthony Armitage, Lee Dillon, and Councillor Jeff Mays, who is um, attending via Zoom. We've also received apologies from Honorary Aldermen and Alder Women, Hilary Cole, Adrian Edwards, Rick Jones, Gordon Lundy, Graham Pask. Andrew Rolls and Molly Locke. I'm not sure if there are any further apologies from the floor. Councillor Berwick. Uh, Councillor Kanda and uh, Councillor Bennyworth both send their apologies. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, I have attended quite a number, quite an old, oh, no, we've done that. Oh, sorry. Yes, we did have a, lighter, a late apology from Molly Locke. My apologies. We go to uh, the chairman's remarks, and I have uh, a quantity of uh, events since uh, last council meeting. In fact, it has been over 20, but I won't go through every single one of them to keep things, the proceedings on time. Uh, I'll take just a half a dozen um, to uh, things that I would like to highlight. I have visited over Christmas um, and around the holidays, um, uh, Birchwood, Willows, Edge and No Trees Care Home Visit. Um, I've also been to the Greenfield House, Phoenix and Hungerford Resource Centres. Um, I'm proudly say that uh, I also attended the um, Invasion of Ukraine Memorial event, which I think we must keep in mind always. Uh, I also went to the, uh, delightfully at the far end, Hungerford Poetry Festival, which was really wonderfully attended by the public. Um, I also went to the, uh, um, on Saturday, the Magistrates Mock Trials Competition, where I'm very proud to say in the semi-finals that the two schools that came top out of a, a dozen or more were Trinity and Kennett Schools, so we can be very proud of our schools. They're future lawyers, so look out. I would, in fact, some of them, I would not like to be prosecuted by them. I'm quite nervous. Um, and then... Uh, Things that have come back to, I didn't go to, but uh, later you hear about Newbury, but I also went to the Thratcham Repair Cafe. Um, this is uh, a charitable organisation uh, that has been restarted um, and is recycling products to avoid landfill by repairing anything from uh, electrical items to clothing to sharpening tools and such like. And I would encourage all to attend these. Uh, I went there and it was really busy. People were queuing up to get in. So that's it. And I go to my uh, Vice Chairman, Bill Lee Drummond. Yeah, well, I went um, to short solemn ceremony to the Holocaust Memorial events with prayers and a lovely hymn sung by St Nick's School. 
and I also went to the um, New Repair Cav. It was a fantastic day, well attended, and it was a really good to see second-hand items being given a new lease of life. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. As I said, this Repair Cafe, I hope it really catches on. So, moving to agenda item three, the minutes, we have three Chairman, sheds. Chairman, sorry to interrupt. Can oh. I just make an intervention and, and thank you and Councillor Drummond very much and also the Mayors of Thatcham and Newbury for all that you do because I know that you work incredibly hard in addition to your day job as a ward councillor and I think we should give a vote of thanks to yourselves for everything that you're doing for us. It's really impressive. Thank you. Yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much indeed. I'll take that as said. <laughs> Right, so um, I will propose the minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 30th of November 2023 uh, to be a signed and corrected record, unless I hear otherwise. Uh, can I ask for a seconder, please? That's Councillor Drummond. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Bowick. Just a point, I think, I'm not sure, if, I just want to check to make sure I've got the right minutes, but um, in one set of, of, of the minutes, uh, um, uh, David Barlow is referred to um, uh, in respect of the minute silence that was held at the executive. Um, he's referred to as David Barlow, and whereas uh, Councillor Bill Graham is referred to as, as Councillor Bill Graham. David was a long-term, long-time chairman and councillor of Hampstead Norris Parish Council. I'm just thinking it might be worth offering, Can add him, that. offering him that honorific. Absolutely. Thank you. And with that addition. So can I, I please ask members who are um, prepared to accept the proposal to approve the minutes of the 30th of November with the um, amendment noted to please raise their hands. Thank you. Any against or abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. They are approved. Okay, um, and I will uh, also move the minutes of the extraordinary council meeting held on the 19th of December uh, be signed as a correct record. Uh, can I ask for a seconder? Yeah. Oh, sorry, proposed from the bench and seconded. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Thank you. Ask for uh, the monitor officer to take a vote, please. Thank you. All those in favour of approving the minutes, can I please ask you to raise your hands? Thank you. Any against or abstentions? Oh, thank you. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that those minutes have been approved. So uh, I will finally move the minutes for the Extraordinary Council meeting of the 20th of February 2024. Uh, I propose from the, the Chair. Can I have a second, please? Sure, Councillor Drummond, any comments or questions or corrections? No, we'll take a vote, please. Thank you. Can I ask all members in favour of approving those minutes to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any against or abstentions? Thank you. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that those minutes have been approved. So, moving to uh, agenda item four, declarations of interests. I will ask the monitoring officer if there have been any declarations of interest submitted prior to the meeting and if there are any declarations from the floor, please. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that we've had no um, declarations prior to the meeting, so I don't know whether any members have any declarations that they wish to make now. Councillor Culver. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to declare an interest that I'm a member of Unison. We have a couple of items tonight that relate to staffing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. So I will move to uh, 
agenda item five, petitions. I ask uh, members if there have been any petitions they wish to present to the council, please. So none, thank you very much indeed. So moving rapidly on to the agenda item six, public questions. I wish to thank members uh, of the public that have uh, submitted questions. The maximum amount of time uh, allocated for public questions is 30 minutes. If we run out of time, any questions that are yet to be asked will receive written responses following the meeting. The questions will appear on screen and will be answered by the relevant portfolio, portfolio holder. Questioners will be given the opportunity to ask a supplementary question. This should be to clarify the response provided and must not introduce any new business. Please note that uh, questions A and C will be receiving written responses. Uh, may I ask uh, Councillor Jeff Beck Brooks to answer the question B from Richard Garvey, please. And therefore, I can be assured that Mr. Garvey is in attendance. He is, Councillor Brooks. I'm here. He's on Teams. I hear, or Zoom. I, hear, I hear your dulcet tones, Mr. Garvey. Very good to see you this year. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's interesting this question, and and I'm not quite sure where you're coming from. Uh, it seems you may have sort of put two and two together and got to thirty six. Um, later in the agenda, we <laughs> talk about the prosperity board. And I'm not sure if that's why this prompted this sort of question. It's not difficult for me to say to you, Mr. Garvey, that the leader and myself, the deputy leader, acting leader, and general factotum uh, has not participated in any discussions to be part of a larger combined local authority. That's very clear, unequivocal. Uh, do you have a supplementary, Mr. Garvey? Thank you for that. Um, I guess my supplementary would be, could you go on record to decline or say that you would not be part of any discussions for the remainder of this electoral cycle? Subject to any government interference after the elections, I have no... Correct. I have no interest in looking at larger combined um, across Berkshire to the west or anywhere else. Okay. I think West Berkshire Council does a great job, particularly in the last 10 months, and I look, I look forward to it continuing to do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Garvey. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we have uh, question D, uh, as uh, given by uh, Richard Garvey, Mr. Richard Garvey, uh, to be answered by Denise Gaines, please. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Garvey, for your question. We as a council do not hold data for the so social housing dis disposals in the district. These organisations are not required to inform us of that information. However, registered providers, housing associations, are required to notify the regulator of social housing about any disposal of a dwelling that is social housing. As a result, the individual provider will be able to provide this information to you. However, we have asked registered providers to notify of us properties that have they, they have plans to dispose of in the future. And as a result, some notifications of pending disposals are now being provided to the housing service. For the financial year 2023-24, it's anticipated that 275 new units of affordable housing will be delivered in the district. We are committed to delivering 1,000 affordable homes by 2030, as in our um, council strategy. The tenure of mix of the new homes delivered in that period, 2023-24, is as follows. 40% social rent, 30% affordable rent, 30% are shared ownership. I'm also delighted to say that one such, that one such site, Sterling Garden, <coughs> Gardens, has just become available with 119 affordable homes, and these are set to have families moving in over the next few weeks. Do you have a supplementary? I do. Thank you, Councillor Gaines, and congratulations on the uh, Sterling Gardens development I saw in the media today. Um, 
I, I did have a supplementary question, but I've changed it because I, I, I received notification today that there was a family, a women and children who are currently living in temporary accommodation and they had been promised a um, accommodation in Hungerford. Um, they'd been approved for it and then SNG decided to sell it off. But it's oh, don't worry, Greg Shefford, which, believe it or not, has now been sold off too. Um, I, I know well, you don't Mr. have Garvey, the this isn't information from the answer you just provided, answer. but could... Mr. Garvey, this isn't a follow-up to the previous answer. We can't introduce new, uh, new material now. I'm not... Okay. So yeah, I'd appreciate if you just... I was just coming to the question. I appreciate you don't have the information that I requested about the number of units that have been sold off. But could you, as portfolio holder, please get hold of that information? Because I genuinely believe this is a great scandal and developing into a great scandal. So if you could get that information and share it as a council, I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. We have, we, we're not, they're not obliged to give us that information. We can ask for it. So it's voluntarily given to us by those housing associations. But I will, I mean, as I say, we have asked them to do it, and some of those housing associations have come back with us, those uh, uh, those answers, but not all. Thank you. We will move to question E, uh, again, uh, answered by Councillor Denise Gaines, please. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Garley, for your second question. Empty homes are a major concern. I think for everybody, they're a major concern. The issue of properties lying empty pending disposal has been raised by officers and members in meetings with our registered provided partners. The matter is the standing agenda item in these meetings in order to enable parties to understand plans and potential alternatives. However, some good news in order to dis dissuade properties from remaining empty for an extended period from the 1st of April this year, where the property has been empty for a period of more than one year, additional premium is going to be applied. 100% for will be added to properties that have been empty for a, one, between one and five, five years, and 200% for um, properties between five and 10 years, 300% for, for properties that have been more than 10 years. We've already started sending those letters out to, to, uh, to householders, which is, uh, which is great news. In addition, there are plans currently in place to have an option on the report a problem page of the website where residents can report potential empty properties. We're also investigating other possible ideas to address the empty property <laughs> issue. Do you have a supplementary? No, sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garvey. And you will be receiving to question F uh, a written reply. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. Right, we move on uh, to uh, item seven, uh, changes to membership of committees. Um, Councillor Brooks to propose these, please. As they appear on the screen, I believe. Pause, a dramatic pause. Happy to propose these for Council's consideration, Chairman. They are uh, a tidying up exercise in, in many respects within a bunch of uh, committees, uh, as per the screen. Thank you. Uh, for questions or whatever. Thank you. And Councillor Denise Gaines, are you seconding these? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak to these, please? No? Thank you. Um, now we will ask the monitoring officer to conduct a vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of approving the proposed changes to committee to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any um, against or, or abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that those changes have been approved. Thank you. So um, moving on to agenda item eight, Motions from previous meetings. A response to the motion from uh, Councillor Tony Vickers on the garage block motion can be found in the executive 14th of March 2024 minutes, and a link was included on the agenda. Therefore, we will not be revisiting the discussion on that item at this meeting. Uh, a 
response to the motion from Councillor Steve Masters on Rwanda scheme motion can be found in the executive uh, 14th of December 2023 minutes and a link was included on the agenda. Therefore, we will not be revisiting the discussion on that item at this meeting. Uh, a response to the motion from Councillor Adrian Abs in on the 20 is plenty mo motion can be found in executive uh, 22nd of November 2023 minutes and a link was included on the agenda. Therefore, we will not be revisiting the discussion on this item at this meeting. So moving um, on to as on block the uh, items 9 to 16, um, I'd like to propose that we just uh, note these uh, from the chair. No, no, never needed unless there's any questions or comments. Okay, thank you very much indeed. We are moving to agenda item 17, um, the West Berkshire Council timetable of public meetings. May I invite Councillor Jeff Brooks to formally move the recommendation contained within the report, please. Very happy to move. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. May I ask for a seconder? Councillor Gaines. Happy to second that, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you wish to reserve your right to speak, Councillor Gaines? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. May I invite uh, Councillor Jeff Brooks to introduce the report, please. You're all rather familiar with it. It's a necessary timetable to build your holidays around. Um, we've avoided Monday evenings at the behest of Councillor Owen Jeffrey, who burned up the email to me to make sure we uh, we adjusted. You get a lot of parish council and town council meetings on a Monday, I take the point. So Stephen and Democratic Services have worked hard to avoid those. We do get some licensing committees on a Monday. Generally speaking, it's business as usual, Chairman, and uh, I put it to the council for agreement. Any comments, questions? No, so I will... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I won't check. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. That was nice and brief and con concise. Thank you. So uh, I will I will now ask the monitoring officer to take a vote and a show of hands. Order. So you need Councillor Gaines and Councillor uh, Brooks. Ah, right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to rush these things through. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so I think Denise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've got nothing to add, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Brooks. Okay. Um, thankfully, uh, Mr. Lynn just reminded me that we are going to adjust the start time of the executive meetings to six o'clock. We think that enables people to have done a full day's work and then come here and spend another three or four hours having a lovely evening here as well <laughs> uh, before they go home and have dinner at half past ten. Um, but I think six o'clock is uh, perhaps a little better for some people. Thank you. So any more actions I need to take from the chair? No, thank goodness. All right. Um, I will now be asking the monitoring officer to take a vote by show of hands, please. Thank you. Can I please ask all members in favour of the proposal to raise their hands? Thank you. Any against or abstentions? Noted. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you. So moving on to agenda item 18, establishment of the Berkshire Prosperity Board. May I invite Councillor Louise Sturgis to formally move the recommendations contained within the report. I move that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask for a seconder, please? Thank you. Uh, do you wish to reserve your right to speak? I will reserve my right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, may I invite Councillor Louise Sturgis to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Chair. So this... This report concerns the proposed establishment of a joint committee called the Berkshire Prosperity Board. Berkshire leaders and chief executives have collectively agreed to establish a Berkshire Prosperity Board 
to work collaboratively towards economic development, prosperity, health, net zero goals, and to provide a unified voice for Berkshire. The Thames Valley Local Enterprise Partnership, the LEP, has also been involved in this process. The board will include the six Berkshire local authorities, West Berkshire, Bracknell Forest, Reading Borough, Slough Borough, the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead, and Wokingham Borough Councils. The focus is going to be on six priority areas, and these have been identified by Berkshire leaders, and they are health and inequalities, education and skills, affordable housing, sector development, strategic infrastructure, and net zero. And West Berkshire is going to lead on sector development. So in terms of funding, the six councils will collectively receive 240,000 per year from the government. And this is going to replace the money that was previously given to the LEP. Funding for LEPs comes to an end this month. It's proposed that 80,000 of this is allocated to the programme management elements of the board with the accountable body who's Wokingham employing the relevant staff for this. In addition, each authority is being asked to contribute £10,000 of revenue and £20,000 of UK SPF funding in 2024-25, which was also previously allocated to the LEP. The Prosperity Board is going to be set up with funding agreed for a year and then reviewed prior to 2025-26. The strategic strength of the unitary authorities working together to make bids to the government for major funding is a key reason for this initiative. This strengthening numbers gives us influence and leverage, and although the county varies in demand, from a largely rural West Berkshire to urban Reading and Slough, we do share historic connections and history and can work well together strategically as we represent all the people of Berkshire, which is over 900,000 residents. So we see the establishment of the board as a very positive move and recommend that council accepts the proposals that are laid out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I now... Uh open the discussion on to the uh, open the debate on the floor are there any questions comments councillor abs yeah thanks very much um not very simple one really 80000 i think you said for staffing how many people is that exactly i don't know the exact number councillor abs but i can find out for you much appreciated because it sounds a bit like one and a bit which is not going to really for six big district councils that's not a lot not going to go very far i'll come back to you thank Excellent. you thank you councillor wilston thank you chair um i may have misunderstood this or misread it but from what i can see there's meant to be uh, the leader of the, each of the six unitary authorities and the quorum is going to be six so if any of them can't make it there's no mention of an alternate and I just think it's going to be a very difficult thing to actually operate in practical terms. Thank you. Councillor Tony Vickers. Thank you, Chairman. I'm all in favour of this, uh, and I hope we, we all vote for it. Um, phrases like working to a shared vision and having a stronger collective voice in corridors where the real power lies. And what um, Councillor Sergis just said, also historic connections of history. It sort of, I couldn't help being reminded of the uh, recent um, episode where, as a nation, we gave away these concepts and chose isolation from our neighbours. I happened to read in my favourite weekly paper this week that since leaving the European Union single market and other institutions of that body, we've trebled the number of civil servants because we've had to create whole regiments of people to do the jobs the Commission did for us, with about one-tenth of the total numbers of people we had during our years inside what you could call the European Prosperity Zone. As a result, we are a less prosperous nation. Local government has suffered cuts, and in our dealings with Whitehall, their cuts in the departments that we really rely on for new legislation, regulations, guidance has suffered greatly. So although I supported in the late 1990s the breakup of Berkshire County Council into its component sovereign districts and boroughs, I hope we're all going to vote for this exercise in cooperation among equals while remaining independents and maybe cut some jobs at the same time and improve our efficiency. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. 
Councillor McKinnon. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I, I must admit, I didn't have a Brexit rant on my bingo card for the for the Berkshire Prosperity Fund, but thank you, Councillor Vickers. Um, and I uh, hope we don't lose too many uh, jobs, because I, I know a lot of our officers uh, do a, a fine job, and uh, I'm sure we could redeploy them elsewhere if they're not needed. Uh, look, we welcome this uh, proposal. It, it, it is um, really a brainchild of central government, but it makes perfect sense as, as what Councillor Sturgis um, has said. Um, and actually, uh, Councillor Williston does appear to be quite correct. It, it does look like the quorum of this is six members. So I, I don't know if um, the, the executive or the administration can, can take that away and look at it. Perhaps a, a, a wee tweak is required to those, but I'm sure we can iron that out uh, once it's all up and running. So, uh, yeah, no arguments from us on this side. Uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you. So any more questions or comments? No. I will ask uh, Councillor Jeff Brooks to speak as seconder. Thank you, and um, for the avoidance of doubt, this is not a precursor to putting Berkshire County Council back together or any combined fire authority. Mr Garvey, if you're still online. Um, we start quite small with this, and there will be a programme manager. We'll build out from that as you start to see schemes come into being. It's important to have this body. The uh, let has perhaps had its day, and I always felt quite distant from the LEP. Our representation was one member, and I don't think we actually re reported back very well from the LEP on what it was doing, apart from now and again, they would tell us what scheme they deliver. I think one recently on the railway station here at, uh, at, at Thiel, I think, and I might be right, and Newbury. So good, the LEP delivered things, but I don't think it was a good uh, at actually reporting what it was working on. So now, with this, the unitary authorities, all six of them, are represented politically. We can get round the table as a quorum of six, Councillor Wollaston, as a quorum of six. I ain't going to change, and let me tell you why. If you haven't got all six in the room, how can you really agree on progress? And we do allow, we will allow a deputy leader to go along. Okay. We'll make sure we add that to the report. Thank you, Councillor Wollaston, for the avoidance of doubt that we will be represented either by the leader or the deputy at these meetings. And therefore, you've got all of the unitaries in the room. I think that's very important. It's not being developed to lose jobs. It's being developed to put bids in to central government, where coming together for perhaps some infrastructure right across the county makes sense. Let me give you an example. And this isn't one we're necessarily going to pursue, but you could, for instance, put in a bid across the county for some serious funding to improve our high streets, from Slough in the, in the east to Newbury in the west, and up to other towns that might benefit from that. I'm not saying that will be a scheme, but it's an example of where there is government funding that pitching and bidding to them on your own as a unitary will not have the weight that a county bid might have. So I'm glad to get the support of the chamber on this. And uh, I think, you know, it will be a slow burn. It will build up. And it's a, you know, I would imagine that schemes will start to be coming to fruition perhaps later next year, early into 26. But it's important to get this going, and I'm grateful for the Council's support on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Brooks. Uh, may I invite the mover of the motion, Louise Sturgis, to make concluding comments, if any. No further comments from me. Thank you, Chair. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. I will now ask the monitoring officer to take a vote by a show of hands, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of the proposals to raise their hands? Thank you. Any against or abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you very much. We're now moving to uh, agenda item 19, statutory pay policy 2024-25. May I uh, invite Councillor Jeff Brooks to formally move the recommendation contained within the report subject to any minor amendments? Uh, I'm really happy, happy to move it. Do you want me to speak now? Or uh, We have a, 
on I, here. I will, I will present you'll, an you'll amendment. Present the amendment. We'll yes. present the amendment. Yes. Um, you move the motion. I'll ask for a uh, second, seconder. In a second. Thank you. Uh, may I invite Councillor Jeff Books to introduce the report, please? So I'll start by reading out uh, an amendment uh, within the recommendation, and it will read as follows. It is recommended that Council adopt and approve the statutory pay policy statement for publication. It is further recommended that the Council delegate authority to the Service Director Strategy and Governance to update the statutory pay policy to reflect any changes as a result of the pay award and to reflect any changes to senior management structure. An important aspect of the recommendation, which I hope will find favour. Chairman, each year we, 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 we review our statutory pay policy. We consider a bunch of comparators. We do use Hay pay scales within it to come up with what you see before you, you tonight. It is procedural. We review it annually and uh, I put it before you. One thing I do want to uh, add for future years is a review of the more senior post pay, pay scales because I understand this hasn't been done since 2019. Now, they may be behind, they may be ahead, but it is important that we review those uh, structures, those, those grades, and we'll be making sure we do that in the statutory pay policy for 25-26. But for this year, you have what is it before you, and I'm looking for the support of Council to agree this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. May I ask uh, Councillor Ian Cottingham, do you wish to speak now or reserve your right to speak? I reserve my right to speak, please. So uh, just understanding that you're seconding this with the amendment as proposed. Correct, I do. Thank you for clarity. Fine. Um, so I now open the debate to the floor. Any questions or comments? Councillor Colvert. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, thank you, Councillor Brooks, for um, proposing this item. My understanding is that um, a few years ago, the Council proposed to change the senior management structure and that the staff were told at that time that it would be cost neutral, but actually the cost of that has been a lot higher. Um, and I know that I declared earlier my interest in being a member of the union. The union would be really interested to know more about how much that actual restructure has cost. Um, I've often heard it said that we do need to pay well in order to compete with the private sector and indeed with large local authorities that are neighbours to us. Um, but I am concerned about the more junior staff um, and their pay levels. We have very many vacancies at the moment. We have lots of challenges around special educational needs, adult social care, drainage because of the flooding and the sewage and so on. And I'm just really concerned that we don't have enough more junior staff to do that work. The system does seem to be creaking at the seams. Um, and I have the greatest respect for our senior managers, of course I do, but I am also very, very concerned about junior staff. I know that there are lots of people um, off sick at the moment. I know members of staff who have second jobs just to make ends meet. Um, and only at the weekend I spoke to a member of staff who only had £10 left in their wallet to last them until the end of the calendar month. Um, so I do think we really need to be very mindful of the challenges that are facing our more junior staff. And Councillor Brooks mentioned about looking at the pay grades. Maybe we can look at the more junior pay grades as well and make sure that we really do focus on the, the important work that those staff do for us and, and have the greatest respect for what they do. So if we could have any costings, uh, maybe at Scrutiny Commission, about the ongoing cost of senior management restructures over recent years, that would be most welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? No, thank you very much indeed. May I invite Councillor Ian Cottingham to speak as seconder, please? Thank you, Chair. So from my perspective, transparency and compliance is really key. I personally take on board Councillor Culver's comments over pay ratios within the report. You've got section four there, which gives an indicator of the ratios between the highest and lowest and median. Uh, my colleague, Councillor Brooks, did indicate the fact that we get benchmarking from Hayes. And again, that will be something which we'll be taking on board to make sure that we are in line with what we should be paying. And it's really, really key, as you say, make sure from the bottom up, we are paying the appropriate salary. Thank you. Um, may I invite the mover of the motion, Councillor Jeff Brooks, to make concluding comments, please. 
I'm grateful for the um, comments made. Uh, I think the cost of restructure is not really part of this debate, but we will take it away and consider it. However, I think we've got some excellent senior ma managers, directors here. Uh, we're looking for the people to my right to, a, to do an excellent job in this council. They know, because I've said it so many times, and every time I meet them, I say it, we need to transform the way we do things here. We need to change attitudes, approaches that have been not changed, as I say, for decades. So you get good people at the top, you get better outcomes. But, but where our salaries, after consideration of comparators, there are things we can do to attract people, Councillor Colver. You know this. We talk about bonuses and golden handcuffs and things like this to get people to join us and prove their worth and stay with us for a year or two with some incentives so to do and then go up the pay scales because they're doing a good job. It makes no sense. You've heard me say it many, many times for temporary workers being here and costing a lot more money than our, 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 basic, our, our staff. So it's under constant review, constant review. We have to put this in place, it's appropriate, but it's under constant review because we are not regimented into this is what we pay when there is a market problem, a supply side problem with skills we need. And I hope that gives you some assurance that uh, this is a basis, but we're constantly looking at how we get better people in the authority, keep them uh, and and use less, less freelance workers. Uh, so, I think it's appropriate, and uh, we keep it under review. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, may I invite um, the monitoring officer to take a vote by show hands? Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of that proposal to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any against or any abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you. Now, um, I will have to pause just right now because uh, hot air rises. It's 24 degrees. I'm suffering a bit, so I'm going to take my jacket off. I apologise. But towards the end of last week, last meeting, I did real father faint. And we really, really must get something done about this air conditioning because it's, it's, it's getting to the point where... I can't operate properly. Councillor Bowick. The cooling has just kicked in, so you might want to change your mind later on. We're in an elevated position here, so it tends to be at least two degrees warmer. So excuse me. <laughs> Some of the longer standing councillors may have remembered Councillor George Pickerskill, who was uh, a Liverpudian, and uh, when he took over um, the uh, council chairmanship, he, oh, I'm getting to work now, and his jacket off, roll up his sleeves, I'm not going to, don't worry, I'm not going to roll my sleeves up. Thank you. So uh, thank you for your consideration and pausing for the moment. Uh, now. Um, I will be moving to agenda item 20, the creation of a service director for delivering better value and san send transformation. May I invite Councillor Heather Codling to formally move the recommendations contained within the report, please. Thank you, Chairman. So moved. May I ask for a seconder, please? Oh, you second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. May <laughs> May I invite uh, Councillor Heather Codling to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the Delivering Better Value in Special Educational Needs and Disabilities, so DBV in SEND, uh, programme was introduced in 2021 as an optional programme providing dedicated support and funding to 55 local authorities, of which West Berkshire is one. We are in the third tranche of this uh, scheme. These authorities were chosen based on the financial challenges experienced due to the high needs block deficit. 
This is a transformational piece of work to improve the operations of the organization and the wider SEND system. The increasing level of cost, demand, complexity of need and availability of current services and the latest inspection frameworks place new and increasing demands from children and families on the council. This proposal is to create a service director post fixed for one term, uh, for one, a term of one year only and will be the senior responsible officer for the DBV in SEND programme. This programme requires strategic leadership and subject specific knowledge relating to SEND transformation. Following the recent LGA corporate peer review, this was an area that was highlighted as needing urgent improvement via the DBV programme. It is recognised that recruitment of a senior leader is needed to enhance the current capacity within the organisation. The cost of the new post will be entirely met from the DBV grant funding. Um, I'm delighted to recommend this proposal to create a new service director post as set out in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. May I ask uh, if uh, in Councillor Ian Cottingham wishes to speak now, or do you wish to reserve your right to I speak? I wish to reserve my right. Chair. Thank you. Um, fine. So I will now open the debate to the floor. Any comments or questions? Councillor Colvert. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Um, we know from the budget debate that we had recently that the high needs block for SEND is the thing that's perhaps most likely to send us into a section 114 and it's certainly a challenge across the whole country. There's been articles in the paper in recent days about this um, and even the government minister has confessed that there is a very big problem around this. Um, I'm just wondering, we did create two other posts um, fairly recently in the um, SEND area. So a service director for education um, and one for SEND as well. And I'm just wondering what this new role will be able to achieve that the previous two roles that we created are not able to achieve. I appreciate that we're getting this money from a specific block, um, but I'm just wondering, you know, those two roles were created not very long ago. So what is it that this new person will do that those people could not achieve? Um, it's also not clear from the appendix with the structure which of those jobs already exist and which we're intending to recruit to. So I'm just wondering, of those people, how many are in post now and who are they reporting to? And if this person is only going to be in post for a year, who will those people report to when that year is over? Because a year is not a very long time. So I'm just wondering how we're going to embed the expertise and the learning from that person's role in the long term into that team. Um, it's something that we've been looking at at scrutiny. I have had discussions with Anne-Marie Dodds about this. Uh, we're hoping to have a paper in May um, and one again in December. So it is something we're very mindful of the fact that this is a really big issue for the council um, and we want to work in partnership with the executive to, to really get to grips with this issue. Um, and I've also asked to go on a two day training course at Warwick University um, funded by the LGA to educate myself about these issues as well. So when it comes to chair and scrutiny, I do the best job that I can um, of looking at these areas. Um, and I just wondered, um, Councillor Codling, what kind of targets and KPIs there might be for this role um, and how you will ensure that the work they do in a relatively short period of time um, will actually deliver in terms of better outcomes um, for children. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I have uh, Councillor Dick. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, SEN uh, in this authority has been overspent for the last 35 years. To my sure and certain knowledge, it is an issue, it is a problem. You're correct. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I do recall at the main budget discussion that the people opposite voted down an amendment from this side, which included extra money to be spent on uh, children with uh, special needs. And that's a disappointment to me. And I want to echo what has been said by my uh, friend from the green side here. She made a point a little earlier um, about having great managers, and we do, and having maybe not enough people in the middle to carry out uh, the work that's involved. Now, I have personal knowledge <clears throat> of the SEN setup, and I would suggest that rather than yet another manager, we would be much better off appointing a couple of staff who could work with children, because what children and their parents, and indeed the schools, are crying out for is specialist help today 
one-to-one in a classroom, not a piece of paper from an office. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dick and Councillor Abs. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, I find myself in somewhat agreement with uh, what Councillor Litigus just said, to be honest. Um, this is an awful lot. It's a senior post, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of just spending a grant because we get a grant. I really want to see value delivered. What I haven't heard and what I haven't seen is because we are the third tranche, what are the success outcomes from the first two tranches in terms of money saved? I, I would have preferred to have seen mm -hmm. more junior posts and action on the ground than another senior post. Um, I am curious about just how many people are going to be managed by this new senior role. But um, if it's a senior role, then it's a six-figure salary. Therefore, it's an awful lot of money going to someone who may or may not be able to deliver. And um, I'm really concerned about that. I'd like to see the money spent more wisely at the lower levels. And we need more people to doing things, not more senior people directing things. Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chair. Um, I won't labour the point because it's been made by others. I agree with what's been said. And speaking as a chair of a board of governors at the biggest primary school in West Berkshire, um, I don't get the sense that the staff at, uh, in the education department at the council need reorganising or need better leadership. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They just need more funding. And I agree with everything that Councillor Dick said, except that I think that his party, which is in government, does bear quite a lot of responsibility for what the Secretary of State for Education today said was a crisis in SEND provision. Now, who's responsible for that? Well, um, delivering better value is what we're being told to do, but it sounds like it's like levelling up. It's a slogan rather than a policy. And um, speaking a lot to teachers on the ground and our SEND lead at my school and talking to others uh, in the education department and, and in other schools, that's what they need. They need, you know, we should be pressing the government to fund this provision properly and we should be doing what we can with what funding we do have, including this money if it's available for more for anything other than just one highly paid job, including this money to help where we can um, with uh, perhaps less uh, exalted posts, but ones that would be appreciated more on the ground where the um, where the work has to be done. And th there's a crisis. So um, is this the best way of dealing with it? I'm not sure it is. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I have uh, Councillor Bowick and then Councillor Books. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, you'll be pleased to know that I'm, I'm going to withdraw my question that I have in uh, uh, members' questions at the end uh, uh, that I was going to put to Councillor Codney because much of that has unfolded here this evening. Um, I share some of the opinions that have been expressed this evening, particularly the one around the, um, the, the ranking of this job, if you like. Um, tranches one and two... Uh, uh, the, the local authorities within that, which I think is about 40-odd uh, 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 local authorities, of varying sizes have all been granted a million pounds in total across the period. So my assumption then is that, is that we'll be looking at a million pounds in tranche three. And uh, um, if indeed service director is a six-figure salary, then that's a substantial proportion of that of that budget and I really urge you to look very closely at whether or not given that we have two new service directors about to about to uh, uh, start with us and um, whether uh, a, a more junior person working with them might be more appropriate um yeah so that was my question thank you uh Councillor Brooks thank you I I I'm not surprised that you would home in on we're getting another senior person and a senior salary. And Councillor Codling and Councillor Codling will answer when they second and wrap up. I've got a lot of faith in our top table. I've got a considerable amount of faith in Anne-Marie Dodds. By the way, our thoughts go out to her chairman, having yeah. lost her father recently. And when you get a new director in, like you get a new managing director into a private company, 
you say to them, how do you want to shape things in order to resolve the issues here? And without just doing this blind, if Anne-Marie Dodd says to us, this is the way I want to shape it, this will make a difference, I'm prepared to back that person and not sit here as a lay person in terms of education and say, you've got it wrong. We'll know soon enough, we'll know soon enough in terms of the outcomes from this investment, because we'll be watching them very, very carefully. But sometimes you need those strategies to come in and say, how are we doing this now? And how do we need to do it? And I've got an overarching ability to look at that and then adjust. And that's what's going on here. And it comes back to that word again, transformation, Chairman. That's what we're doing here. We're supporting our, our top table, our CEO, the corporate directors, and Marie Dodds as a new person coming here who's had a great ability very quickly to look at a, a department, a directorate, and say, we need some serious change here. I'm backing you, Anne-Marie. Put that in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Uh, any further questions or comments? Councillor. Hello, Ker. Um, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I wanted to listen to what everyone had to say before I actually spoke. And, and what my friend over there mentioned is actually what triggered my, my comment. I, I think the purpose of the questions is not to challenge the decision that's been made. It's just seeking clarification and putting points forward so that if, if that hasn't been brought into the decision-making process, it, it can be considered. And I think that's the essence of the questions. That's why we ask, ask questions. It's not to challenge, it's not, it's not to challenge the quality of the decision making, which I'm sure has been well thoughtful, thoughtful. It's probably the way it's been presented, that's the issue. But I have a specific question. Um, again, because I'm an accountant. So when you talk about money and you talk about budget constraints, when you bring new numbers, I quickly go through it. And there's a clause in here that says. 5.2 that the SD will be responsible for the line management of additional posts recruited to the council on a fixed term basis to deliver elements of the DBV program. I just want to understand the timing of this because this is an appointment for 12 months. So are these people in post? Are they coming post um, recruitment? How long will it take to recruit these people? Just to give us a sense of the efficacy of the spending of this money not to challenge the quality of the decision because send is clearly an area where a lot of support is needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. So unless there's any further questions or comments, we'll move to uh, Councillor Cottingham to uh, speak. Thank you, Chair. So in my role as portfolio holder for finance, I'm also on the schools forum board and it comes no surprise to anyone in this room uh, the <laughs> deficit and the high needs is, is always a constant discussion. Uh, we do, picking up Councillor Dick's uh, earlier comment, we do send, tend to be spending more and more money in this area, endless pit. And, and what we're doing is we're building up a deficit, which Councillor Culver quite rightly identified has the potential if the government calls in this overdraft in 2026 to bankrupt us. So... I think the definition of, of insanity is repeating the mistakes of the past. So I actually see this as part of transformation. As my colleague, Councillor Brooks said, backing someone who's come in with new ideas, new ways of working to address. So changing anything, you need leadership. You need new ideas. This is all about getting a new leader on board to look at best practice, uh, take on board the fact that we do need to have appropriate bodies to make sure we're servicing uh, the people who do need special needs, but we need to ask the question, why do we have such a high proportion of children in West Berkshire requiring special needs? What's driving that? And then understanding what can we do from a preventative side to reduce that cost going forward, but also giving children in West Berkshire a better outcome uh, coming into education as well. So it is a huge pressure which is facing uh, not just the council, but also most importantly, the teachers at the coalface were having to deal with this. So I speak this from personal experience. My own middle daughter, she works in, in a school in London and she's finding it really, really tough with children coming in who should be out of uh, mainstream school 
looking after special needs, not being able to because there isn't the money there and understanding the reasons for that. And as I say, it's all about prevention and making sure that the outcomes for everyone uh, are protected. And also, as I say, looking to make sure that we're getting new ideas, and new ways of working, hence this particular role. Thank you. Um, may I invite the mover of the motion, Councillor Heather Codling, to make concluding comments, please. Thank you. A lot of good questions in there. Um, um, I apologise for not addressing them before. Um, the structure, as I see it, and from what I understand from Anne-Marie, um, is that the service director needs to be at a high enough level to negotiate with health, to work with other um, local authorities to bring in the right information. It wouldn't, necessar it wouldn't work at a junior level. Um, the other two directors that we've appointed, one is head of education, and the other one is for head of children's services. The head of education would have responsibility for SEND, but not immediately, that, that would happen later. But the person that we have recruited has a lot of experience of this and has been in an authority where this sort of programme has been in place. The other members uh, of the team that will be put in on the, on the chart that you've got on, on the report, um, as far as I understand, most of those will be recruited newly. Some of them may be staff that, that work within the council already um, and will be transferred across. Um, but the idea is, as has been mentioned several times, this is a transformational piece of work and it is a million pounds. The million pounds has to be spent during the year. Um, it is a go it's a, a government um, stipulation. Um, and the idea is that we actually drive down the costs. One of the posts on there is a head of DBV commissioning. So somebody to commission places for young people to go to and to drive the costs of those things down. So that if we feel those posts need to go on after the year, we would have the funds to do it without needing the million pounds. Um, Councillor Bowie, thank you for withdrawing your question. I can answer, answer it as far as, as well as I can. Um, the impact demanded by DBV requires the senior specific management accountability. And government has already put in place uh, some key um, measures for us to respond to. They will be uh, expecting quarterly reports before they pay us the next tranche of money. Um, I would anticipate th that the measures would be through feedback from children and young people, co-design of the programme with parents um, and, and carers and the schools, and survey evaluations will be ongoing um, as we go along. Um, I don't know the specifics, but that will come about as this person is in post, working with Anne-Marie and also the head of education and the team, and we will be measuring it closely. But one of the main things is to drive down the cost. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to move this. Thank you. I put a point of information here from the chairman. You may wonder why I go out and visit uh, organisations and charities and clubs. Well, it's I don't just you know stand there looking pretty um, with my with the chain that does it. But I do ask questions and I do listen to all of the organisations and their comments and questions. Um, and I do feed them back. Earlier this month, uh, I went to Time to Talk. And this is an organisation based in the Broadway in, house in, in Newbury. Um, and basically they look to mental health. And if we're doing some reorganisation and we're trying to look at how to do it better and more effectively, I, from the chair, uh, in my discussions, it was a long discussion with the head uh, of that organisation. Um, it That would be one I would suggest from the chair that we look at, because we need to look at charities. This is a very successful, successful well-financed charity, and uh, I, I hope that we will take on board that this is the type of thing we also need to look at. Anyway, thank you for me abusing my privileges, um, but we will, so we will now move on. Um, and I will now ask the monitoring officer to take the vote by show of hands, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of the proposal to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any members against? 
And any abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you. So um, moving to agenda item number 21, notices of motion. I have decided to change the order of the motions and we will be debating the care leavers protected characters Got my teeth back in. Characteristic motion first, uh, care leavers protected uh, characterization. Uh, may I invite Councillor Heather Codling to formally move the motion, please? So moved, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask uh, uh, Councillor Justin Pemberton, would you like to reserve your right to speak? Well, I'd be happy to second this motion. Second chairman. It, yes. That uh, would be helpful. I'll, I'll reserve my right as well. Thank you. Thank you. I have a point of order, please, Chairman. A point of order. Oh, sorry. Chairman. Yeah, thank sorry. You. Somewhere uh, else. Th thanks, Chairman. Now, I I'm looking at part three uh, of the Constitution, paragraph 12.6.1, uh, which says that motions uh, should be referred without debate to a relevant body for decision because the subject matter falls within their remit. Um, the call to action on this motion, word for word, says that we resolve to ask the executive consider the following proposals. So I would suggest that this motion should be referred to executive based on those grounds. And in fact, while I'm at it, all five of the motions here tonight appear to fall within the executive remit and really should be referred to that body for, for, for dealing with. Thank you, Councillor McKinnon. I will take advice on that. Thank you, Chairman. So um, Councillor um, McKinnon is correct that executive functions can only be determined by executive. However, it is within the remit of council to ask executive to um, consider and make a um, decision on a matter that falls within their remit. Um, this is not without precedent. We have had previous um, matters that have come to council and that have been debated in council that have resolved in effect to go back to executive. So it enables council to have a decision on the matter before the matter is ultimately determined by the executive. So um, this is, in my opinion, um, quite in order um, for Council to debate these motions as drafted. Uh, thank thank you. you, Mrs Clark, for, for that reply. And uh, forgive me, Chairman. Um, I do have a uh, all, all of the, the five, uh, I take your point, Mrs Clark, but all of these five motions really fall within the remit of the executive. I have a funny feeling that not all of them are going to be debated tonight. And some of them, or one of them, might be kicked to executive, as we've seen before. I wonder if um, Mrs. Clark or, or you, Chairman, could could elaborate on the criteria you use when you decide whether to debate it here in council or indeed to refer it to executive. I rely on my legal advice. So, yeah, so I, th I think uh, th there are a couple of them that aren't aren't executive matters. So, so I think where where council is asking the leader. Um, to, to write on, on more general policy matters um, and, and where these are things that are beyond the remit of the council, but within the, the interests of residents of this um, district. So I think um, I, I am comfortable in my decision making or in my advice to the chairman. It is, of course, a matter for the chairman to um, determine whether to accept my advice. But I am quite content that, that the motions um, that will be debated tonight um, are appropriately debated and appropriately as those motions are drafted within the remit of the council um, to, to consider. So I will take that advice, but also I feel, is this a point of information? It's a, or? No, it's a, well, or order, yes. Um, well, <laughs> so I welcome this. But all, I just want to make one observation, if I may, Chair. We sat here for four years bringing motions to this council, um, and the then opposition did too, and meeting after meeting, they got the motions got referred, sometimes for years, um, to because we're still working through the backlog, sometimes for years um, to be uh, considered by some other group. And... It's a bit odd to find Ross saying this because he was on the executive at the time, was only too happy to do that. But nonetheless, he's right. It's incredible to suddenly find all these motions, which clearly would have been uh, under the previous administration referred to um, uh, the executive or to an advisory groups or to other bodies. However, since we've been arguing for years that we should be debating more stuff in the chamber, because that's democratic and that's what our residents expect. I very much welcome this change of heart. I Thank should you, think Chair. so too, Councillor Marsh. Order, please. I'd like to 
as I've been asked for my opinion, which is very, very rarely, big surprise. But as Councillor Marsh has said, I'm here uh, for the councillors. I'm not here for the exec. And I, like Councillor Marsh, feel we more, want more openness and clarity. And that's my instinct personally. And that's why, with the advice that I've got, that I feel we would proceed because I do feel it's more healthy. I do feel I did in the past, like Councillor Marsh, feel frustrated that things would just go whoosh. And you just feel that full council doesn't have a lot to say. And I think that it does. So as my own personal experience and my legal advice is that I, I will go forward as we have I have been advised. It may be a change, but that's my prerogative. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Thank you very much indeed. So may I invite uh, Councillor Heather Codling to formally move the motion, please. So moved. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Bowick. Sorry, Chairman, I thought we were in debate. Are we in debate now? No, we just... It's not oh, been moved. It hadn't been moved. So it's, it's been moved. But it's I, been moved. I, I didn't it's know that you wanted... Wanted... I didn't realise you yeah. wanted to discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it's not what I heard just a moment ago, OK? I haven't spoken to him. No, that's no, OK. I was looking at your leader and he was giving the, the lead on this, so fine. Thank you. I understand now, Councillor Bowick. No, it's not astonishing. I've just given a call. Thank you. Will we please have order? Okay, I've made a ruling on this, and we're continuing. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence. Chairman. Fine, I'll try again. May I invite Councillor Codling to formally move the motion? I think I'd already No, moved I'm it. just I'm making... Yes, and yes. to move it, sorry. <laughs> See, I was a bit distracted. Was, yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I am delighted to bring this uh, motion to Council, and actually... I um, understand that we have several of our own care experienced young people watching this on YouTube tonight. So I'm glad it's come to full council where, you know, they can see we take the seriousness of this. So in 2022, the McAllister Review, an independent review of children's social care, recognised the often poorer outcomes for people with care experience and recommended that government should make care experience a protected characteristic the report highlighted the barriers and discriminations, ca discrimination care leavers can face throughout their life. For example, 70% of people who have been in care have a shorter life expectancy. Over half of those in custody up to the age of 21 have been in care. A quarter of the homeless population in England and Wales have experienced the care system. The McAllister report concluded that many care experienced people face discrimination and prejudice in their day to day lives. The public perception of care experienced young people is that they are damaged and cannot be redeemed. This can lead to negative assumptions being made. This stigma and discrimination can be explicit and implicit and is evidenced in the way care experience is discussed in schools, workplace and the media. At its worst, this can lead care experienced people being refused employment, failing to succeed in education, or facing unfair judgments about their own ability, particularly when they wish to have a family of their own. As corporate parents, which we all are, we have a respons responsibility to nurture and support the talents of the young people in our care and to ensure we assist them to reach their full potential. In December 2023, the Executive of West Berkshire Council approved the updated Equalities Impact Assessment new format as part of the Equalities, Diversity and Inclusion Framework. This includes care experienced people as one of the groups impacted. Many local authorities have already adopted this recommendation and I would like to think that West Berkshire Council is committed to being a good corporate parent and improving the lives of disadvantaged groups. This motion links strongly with our council strategy area, a fairer West Berkshire with opportunities for all. 
We especially request that we ask our, our partners and stakeholders and other local organisations to treat care, ex care experience as a protected characteristic until such time as it may be introduced by legislation and to adopt the corporate parenting principles. I'm therefore asking this council to support this motion and ask the executive to note its contents and adopt the recommendations in it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, may I ask uh, that uh, this is seconded by Councillor Justin Pemberton. Could you please move the motion? Second the motion. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's a real honour to be able to second this motion that's brought by Councillor Codling. Uh, I'm a foster carer myself and, and committed to do uh, the very best that I can to protect our vulnerable young people. Um, at the moment, there's a movement happening uh, and these kinds of discussions are taking place in council chambers all across the country. And this evening is our turn in West Berkshire, a movement which calls for the UK to be the first country in the world to protect the rights of care experienced people in equality law. And it's long overdue. Councillor Codling set out the, the, the stats in her speech and, and, and one that moved me was that 70% of care experienced people are likely to die prematurely. Some care experienced people never grow old. These are devastating facts and it's something that makes me feel very emotional when I say it out loud. These are young people who through no fault of their own end up in the care system. They didn't choose this, they leave the family home often traumatised and once they leave care and reach legal age, face challenges once again. Often, I often meet young people in the care system and I know of lots of children that have lived in multiple different homes as they grow up. We need to create a new offer for our care leavers, meaningful joined up policies and help our young people transition into independence. Just like any individual, these young people want love, nurture and a sense of belonging. But most care leavers don't have the protection of a family support network to guide them when things go wrong or someone to tell them they're going in the wrong direction. The scaffolding of the care system suddenly falls away. I'm proud to live in West Berkshire and of the things this council has already done and continues to do for our most vulnerable young people. Let's ensure our care experienced people get the equality of opportunity they deserve and empower them to be the best that they can. I want to be proud of the fact that tonight, our council votes to treat care experience as though it were a protected characteristic. And I would urge all councillors, regardless of political allegiance, to join with Councillor Codling and I to support this motion. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I did actually have a preamble, of, and I, I will say it because it needs to be clarified, that the uh, uh, advisor of the council that they will debate this motion this evening in order to facilitate the discharge of business in accordance with procedure rule 12.6.3. Um, so uh, if we move on, uh, immediately we go to open the debate. Um, any questions? Councillor Burke. Thank you, Chairman. And you'll note that I don't have to refer to my leader. So I'm very glad to hear that. I'm very pleased to see this motion here today, uh, Councillor Codling. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased you've moved on from the position you were taking last year when you, when you decided arbitrarily to postpone a meeting of the Corporal's Parenting Panel. I, kind of saw, I, I, re I regret somewhat that the way this has been brought forward to, uh, for, for, for decision is... Um, it's very contrived, and it feels like somewhat like like virtue virtue signaling. I, I completely agree with the with the comments you've made about the importance of looking after our the children in our care and Councillor uh, Pemberton. But the, um, we, and we've asked we're asked to note the difficulties that children in our care face, and that elected members have duties as corporate parents uh, that are unavoidable. But we know this all. We should do at least. We should already be thinking about the welfare of our chil of children in our care and their outcomes and plan uh, decision uh, in, in all decisions and plans that we make. And the motion then asks us all to agree to be mentors for the children in our care. Now, this really concerns me. Uh, it's a peculiar proposal. The key question that, as I said, that we should always ask ourselves uh, um, as corporate parents is, would this be good enough for my child? 
And certain skills and understanding are needed to mentor any young person successfully. And this is especially true for those who are care experienced. And I'm sure that Councillor Pemberton has, has those skills, but I'm not sure that I do. And without being uh, disrespectful, I'm not sure that many people in this room um, have that level of skill and expertise. Um, and we, 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 there's a risk that we could do more harm than good. And we're asked to agree that all decisions, services and policies should be delivered while considering that care experienced young people have a protective characteristic. And this, this is the way this is set out is it, virtual virtue signaling, pure, plain and simple. Because if not, uh, if members are not already acting as corporate parents and asking those questions, um, would this be good enough for my child? Then something has gone badly wrong here. Now, um, before you all point the finger at the previous administration, I'll remind you of two real champions of our children in care. Some of you re may remember the impassioned, deeply personal speech that Councillor Gordon Lundy, care leaver and later leader of council, once made in this chamber in support of funding for children and family services. And I'm sure that members on both sides of the chamber will acknowledge the achievement of Councillor Lynn Doherty in leading the recovery of children's services from inadequate to good in just two years. Uh, when we boil it down, this motion calls for the council to write to other people to do better and for council to add a new tick box in the equality impact assessment form. You don't need a motion for that. You could just get on with it. So I pondered why this motion has been brought forward. And I, I kind of, I'm a bit more aware of why it's been brought forward, but I did, I, I, I was slightly concerned um, that there's, an, uh, there's a line here about council listening more to the voices of young people. And this was a point that was made uh, by Ofsted in their focus <laughs> visit last, uh, last year. And a similar point was, was made in the recent LGA peer review when they said that co-production with young people needed to improve urgently. If you think that more showboating in public meetings is going to fix that, you're surely mistaken. Just get on with it. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Bowick says virtue signaling, really? Yeah. I would like to make an aspect that care leavers, uh, or sorry, make an observation on an aspect that care leavers experience. A recent study reported in The Guardian in September highlighted that childhood and care raises the risk of entering English youth justice system by a factor of eight. Using data collected by the Ministry of Justice and the Department for Education, the study monitored the experience of almost 2.3 million children born in England between 1996 and 1999. Dr. Katie Hunter, the study leader, pointed to a number of reasons why care experienced children are more likely to have a criminal record and to be overrepresented amongst uh, prolific offenders. They were often criminalised for behaviour that was not a result uh, in a result youth justice intervention if it had occurred in a non-care setting. Children can fa uh, care children can face excessive surveillance in care. They have unfairly targeted for enforcement. Care experienced children are also more likely to have mental health and drug problems and to struggle at school, all of which increases the likelihood of being criminalised. Dr. Katie Hunter went on to say that the disadvantages could be exacerbated by instability and lack of support available within the care system. During the period covered by the study, the number of children cautioned or convicted in England fell sharply. About 39% of care experienced in individuals born in 1996 received a criminal record compared to 26% born in 1999. The drop was steeper for those without care experience with youth justice involving halving from 6% to 3% the four birth years. So the ratio gap between the two groups widened. Anne Longfield, the chair of the Commission on Youth uh, Young Lives and a former children's commissioner said, the disproportionate number of care experienced experience children who receive a youth justice caution, conviction or custodial sentence is shocking. This is further proof that many of the systems that are supposed to protect and support our most vulnerable young people, particularly black and minoritised children, are instead failing them. Without better investment in and reform of children's mental health services, children's social care 
family support and education system, we were writing off the life chances of thousands of young people before they even reach childhood. Thank you, Councillor. Can you summarise, please? David Graham, the National Director of the Care Leavers Association, said the figure of 33% of such children having contact with the youth justice system is far higher than the previous estimates. It is a terrible indictment of the failure of local authorities to parent and support children in their care. If birth parents were told that there was a one-third uh, chance of their children would end up in youth justice system, they would do whatever it took to stop this happening. Thank you, it, thank you, Councillor. You've had your three minutes. Thank you. Councillor Dick. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I need to defend myself to the leader, acting leader, leader who acts, which, whichever, but um, you described me as a lay person. So I'm just going to, uh, you did, um, I'm just going to speak as someone who was a teacher for 12 years and a head of primary and certainly for 30, um, a magistrate for 30 years and indeed was uh, on the bench in Slough today and chairman of the YMCA in Reading for some years now. Um, so I have a little bit of knowledge of the, of the uh, area. All I'd want to say is what the proposer of the motion said I thought was excellent. What the seconder of the motion said I thought was excellent. I don't know what we're doing here. We should just pass this motion, but to pick up a comment, get on with it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jeffrey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May the Lord forbid that you wouldn't all hear my words clearly. Mr. Chairman, please may I reassure, reassure Councillor Burke on one point. Many of us will have known Alderman and former Councillor Molly Locke, who was insistent in her many years as the Executive Member for Children and Young People that every councillor had to be, not only legally, but actually a corporate parent. And I think that referring to us as mentors or aiming to be a mentor is fully within the meaning of being a corporate parent. So be reassured, councillor, I think we are taking this in the right direction. Thank you. Councillor Brooks? Uh, I apologise to Councillor Dick, and I'm glad he reminded me of his CV, and I'm very glad he's working very hard, heading down to the bench and sorting people out. Well done, and I apologise. I will add, though, while I'm on my feet, that isn't it good to have some debates here at Council, yeah. Councillor Marsh? Yeah. Um, you've been complaining for many years, and here we are, debating something that it will perhaps, if it is supported, send a really good steer to executive that this is what council wants you to do. And I think that's healthy and that's a change we're bringing in here, Councillor Marsh, to have more debates here. So a thumbs up, please. You seemed a little agitated earlier at the idea of it. This is excellent. It is not my subject matter expertise. I'm absolutely four square behind it. And Councillor, Bo Councillor Dick, we are going to get on with it. We are doing it. We're emphasising what we're doing here. We're laying a marker down. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think yeah, Councillor Coyle first. Sorry, I, I just wanted to point out to um, Councillor Burke that um, there are actually a huge number of local authorities uh, that, that have, have already passed motions along these lines. So in terms of virtue signaling, I don't think that's what we're doing at all. I think what we're sending a message, we're sending a message to those young people and those adults who were in care previously and are in, in, impacted by the discrimination that we're talking about. We're sending a message to them that we in West Berkshire, all of us care about the issues that they face in the same way that so many other councils have already done. And hopefully that message will ultimately get to government so that the Equalities Act itself can be amended. I think that's an important thing to do and it's nothing to do with virtue signaling. Thank you. Councillor Patterdale. Thank you. To follow on from Councillor Coyle's excellent words, one of the many differences between this Lib Dem administration and the previous Conservative administration, one of the things that was 
recognised in May last year by West Berkshire voters to the extent that the number of Lib Dem councillors went up from 16 to 29 and the number of Conservative councillors went down from 24 to 11, is that this administration is much more empathetic. This motion raises awareness and encourages positive behaviour about a real issue. I see no harm with doing this, and I'm not so precious about my time that I think we that I'm 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 prepared to spend my time debating this. I'm just surprised that those opposite are so dismissive of it. Thank you, thank you, Councillor McKinnon. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, no, there's a bit, a bit of peril clutching going on across on the other side. Um, there's. There's nothing wrong with this motion at all. Um, and of course, Councillor Pemberton and Councillor Coyle just, um, you know, they, they said that this is not the first local authority to consider such a motion. It is a bit of a round robin job that's going around all the councils. Um, is this motion going to do any harm? Well, no, it's not going to do anything because we're asking the executive to consider these proposals, all of which are perfectly sensible and may well send a message to, to, to young people. My, my, my concern, I don't know if you'd call it a concern, is, what are what is this council going to do differently once this motion is passed or once the council decides to treat care experienced people as having a protected characteristic what are our services doing right now or not doing right now which is going to change after this because if there is anything substantive in answer to that question we're doing something wrong right now mm -hmm. and i'm not sure that's the case i think i know councillor boy has got some great experience before we get all the flutter and dismiss his experience. I saw him work so hard for four years in that portfolio as children and young people. So what's actually going to change? I'm not sure. We have a Liberal Democrat motion towards a Liberal Democrat controlled council, which is going to pass. We're then going to go to the executive and we're going to have this discussion again. We're going to get, not going to get many people on this side voting against, I don't think. But why wait for this motion? Why hasn't the executive done it already? Why are we having to go through this? It's not a debate. This is a motion which nobody's really going to argue with. So let's go on with it. Let's all vote for it and we can move on. And, uh, I will say, actually, I have nine months to go. Councillor Stewart. Um, I, I wasn't going to speak um, and uh, I wasn't going to, to prolong this debate, non-debate. Um, but, um, and what I will do is probably no surprise to anybody in this room, I'm not going to talk politically because actually um, that's not the sort of person that I am. But what I can say is that, and, and this is to take up um, one of the points that Councillor Bowick made about people perhaps not feeling that they have the suitable skills to act as a mentor, as the words have been used in this motion, for young people. And um, many of you will know I work for a charity that works with children who have been bereaved. So not quite in the same space, but but actually it's um, it very much is about work on a <coughs> excuse me one to one basis with children and also in groups. And I was privileged to be able to go to one of our group sessions um, very recently, um, and I can tell you that I was quite nervous about being in a room of 17 children from the age of five to 12 who had been bereaved and had a huge number of different scenarios, traumas, some really difficult stories that I needed to listen to. Um, and it was immensely rewarding. Um, I don't know that I had the right skills to be there. I think I didn't do any harm, and I think that's probably the best that I could say. But what I would suggest is that if we are going to vote this through, that perhaps what we need to do is seriously think about any additional training that we may need as councillors if this administration's aim is for us to become more of mentors to young people. Thank you. Any further comments, questions? Um, I would just say I really appreciate the contribution made by the Conservatives. Thank you. So we will move on to... Thank you, Chairman. With, it is, that's the whole point of the debate. Thank you. Councillor Codling. 
thank you. I'd just like to wrap up. No, definitely not virtue signaling. This is something uh, perhaps I should have brought forward nine months ago. Um, but I've worked with the officers here, spoken to some of the young people that are apprentices here, um, who are care experience. And actually, some of this wording has come from them. So it's it's not virtue signaling at all. Mentoring, that can take many forms. It might be that we're looking to place an apprentice in a particular job and your company has that opportunity. So maybe it's that sort of mentoring, not necessarily one-to-one -one coaching. I've spent the last 20 odd years as a volunteer with Girl Guiding and have met girls across a huge range of skills, um, and life experiences. So I perhaps I feel a little more comfortable in that space. And I've worked with sort of five-year-olds to 18-year-olds on that. And not everyone will. So I would welcome training for those who are interested in doing some mentoring of, of whatever they feel they can cope with. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. So um, we will ask the monitoring officer to conduct a vote by a show of hands, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of this proposal to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any against or abstentions? No, Chairman, I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you. We move to uh, Petzer's prizes. Um, may I invite C Councillor Justin Pemberton to formally move the motion? Uh, yeah, happy to move, Chairman. Thank you. May I check that uh, if this is uh, seconded by Councillor Louise Sturgis? Yeah, seconded, Chair. Thank you. Okay, and you uh, wish to reserve your right to speak? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I invite uh, Councillor. So advise that we be debated. Well, we've said that already. Well, no, it's, it's actually be there. It needs to be moved and seconded, then you decide where it goes. Okay, so what are we saying? So we'll just say it would be debated okay. and then ask Councillor okay. um, to move. Getting a little bit repetitive, but uh, uh, refer to the procedure rule 12.6.3, and I've decided that this will be debated tonight. Thank you. So um, we have yeah. Councillor Pemberton uh, to uh, speak to the motion. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, when some of my residents got in touch with me last year, shortly after the election, uh, and told me that pets were still being given away as prizes, I was genuinely shocked. I started looking at some of the statistics relevant to this, and I found that I was in good company. Uh, polling conducted by Savanta on behalf of the RSPCA found that almost nine in 10 UK adults are shocked that pets can still be given away as prizes. This barbaric and outdated practice needs to end. Take goldfish, for example. Many people will take goldfish and put them in a bowl, which is clearly not the best environment for a fish. What people promoting pets will not tell you is that they require a lot of care. Uh, all reasonable people know what that is. A big fish tank, outside pond, clean water, filter, oxygen, good food. The list goes on. And we all know that animal ownership is a big responsibility. The consequences of not getting this right or being unprepared should touch all of our consciences. Goldfish are easily stressed and often fish who are won as prizes suffer miserably from shock and oxygen starvation. Many die before their new owners even get them home. West Berkshire Council is one of 40 local authorities across the country that has already followed guidance issued by the RSPCA and, and taken the approach that we all know to be appropriate and prohibited pets as prizes at any events on council controlled or operated land. The RSPCA's own analysis confirmed that over four in five adults agree that local government should ban pets as prizes on their land. And in 2022, thousands of people supported an RSPCA campaign to urge councils up and down the country to take action, which as I've already mentioned, West Berkshire has already done. But despite those legal measures, these do not go far enough. Putting to one side the disparity between what the law says in different parts of the UK, the legislation in England and Wales prohibits the transfer of animals by way of sale or price to anyone under the age of 16, unless accompanied by somebody over the age of 16, or it is within the family context. 
any legal safeguards are rendered, uh, are rendered meaningless by inappropriate loopholes, which mean that animals are kept and transported in conditions which do not meet their needs, often resulting in their premature and distressing death. The second issue is that town and parish councils across the district are not obliged to follow West Berkshire Council's lead. This motion seeks to formally request that those town and parish councils adopt the same policy, standards and guidelines, so there can be no doubt as to this district's commitment to animal safety and welfare. I also am seeking through this motion to apply pressure on our government through uh, the Department for Food, uh, Rural Affairs and Agriculture to bring the current legislation uh, in the Animal Welfare Act up to date banning the giving of all prizes, not just on council owned and operated land, and making sure that these legal safeguards are fit for purpose. This would deliver a powerful message to the community. Pets are for life, not just a prize to be won at the fair. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we move to uh, debate, and I've got Councillor McKinnon already. Thanks, Chairman. This really reads a bit like an opposition motion. I'm, I'm not sure if the, the party opposite have quite got used to the fact that they control the council. Um, now, lots of us on this side of the chamber and over there will know that I'm very fond of a debate. Um, we've often crossed swords, um, hopefully in a nice friendly manner, uh, most of the time. So I would not seek to curtail debate about things that the council can control or, or has a purview over. Even in this motion, we're told that the council has already banned the giving of pets as prizes on public land. We've already done that, and we had a motion in the previous uh, term doing this. So what's the call to action here? It's to ask the leader of the council, the acting leader of the council, Councillor Brooks, let's call him that for, uh, for clarity, to write to the chairpersons of all town and parish councils across the district. Well, why not leave it to those town and parish councils, what they want to do on their land? It's not for us to tell them what to do. I don't like pets being given as prizes any more than Councillor Pemberton. But this, really, I don't want the council to turn into a debating chamber about things that really are not under our concern. So I'm going to shut up now. Let's get on with it. And let's talk about things that the council actually can control. Thank you. Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be brief because it looks like it's going to be a long night. Um, just to reassure Councillor Brooks, um, and I think other members were aware of what that I made the point, I did welcome the debate. Uh, I was just kind of surprised that it's a novelty after all these years when we brought many motions which were not debated and little more was ever heard of them. Um, now I know that we can do this. I can assure you that the Green Party has very strong policies indeed on a variety of animal welfare measures. And uh, I look forward to perhaps uh, raising one or two of them here. And um, some of them may be more controversial than this one and, and require rather more uh, action. And uh, we'll get to that in due course. On this motion, uh, we support it. Um, I think most people will. And I'm actually going to do something practical about this because thinking about it, the town council in Newbury, of which, uh, where I lead the opposition group, now three strong. Um, the town council um, in Newbury does have events. Now, the main, the biggest fair is on West Berkshire land in Goldwell Park, but the um, there are events in um, Victoria Park, for example, that could easily uh, be covered by this. And I will endeavour, and I'm sure uh, members there will agree, to to adopt this policy and don't forget the town council is the, is the council that um still has a policy um of um hedgehog highways and compulsory um hedgehog holes in developments and although the town council doesn't have the, the power to bring that in and sadly that's west berkshire council which disagrees with newbury town council on the matter but this is the town council that cares about hedgehogs we care about <laughs> fish and um, I will be bringing these proposals um, inspired by this motion to Newbury Town Council in due course. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Any other first questions? Councillor Culver. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, we um, support this um, and we did see this come round as a round robin email a while ago to, to councillors across the country. Um, 
We have the sheep fair returning to East Elgley this June for the first time in many years. Um, and I can assure councillors that we won't be giving away sheep um, <laughs> at the sheep fair. Um, so rest assured about that. Um, so, yes, we very much support this. Um, I just wish that the party opposite had supported our hedgehog petition, um, which took a long time to come to this chamber. Um, and we were given many excuses about why that could not be supported. Um, we were told that there would be a public education campaign about hedgehogs, um, but we've seen no evidence of that so far. So perhaps we could get an update about that soon. That would be most welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments or questions? Otherwise, we will... Uh... I ask uh, Councillor Louise Sturgis to uh, put any other further points. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Councillors Culver and Marsh for your support of this motion. Um, to Councillor McKinnon's point, I think there is strength in numbers and the more councils actually, actually take action on this, and write to the government, hopefully, you know, we will achieve an, an outright ban. Um, I was contacted by a lot of my residents as well. I think if my residents care about it, then I should care about it. Um, and I'm also of an age where I do remember going to fairs where goldfish were in, in bags. Um, so, and I was really shocked to learn that this can still happen as well. Um, I think we do already have a policy in place around this, and so that's something we should certainly all be proud of. So that's fantastic. But I also think that animals, whatever their size, um, should be protected from any unnecessary suffering as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I will now ask the monitoring officer to con He's talking, he? Yeah, but it's the close, so he, he gets to, to make any comments at okay. the conclusion of the debate. Right, so we'll go to Councillor Justin Pemberton. Do, are there any further points? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman, and, and thank you to, to all members tonight for your encouraging comments. Um, it's good to hear that that this that, that you're happy to support this motion. Um, I did suspect it would be somewhat less controversial than the previous one. Um, and do you know what? I, I, I agree with the vast majority of what Councillor McKinnon uh, has said. You know, we cannot force town and parishes to do anything. We can ask. We can persuade, we can cajole. Um, that is what this motion seeks to do. But I, I want to emphasise as well, just briefly, the other part of the motion, which was applying pressure to the government. Um, the legislation in its current form is not fit for purpose. You know, it is illegal to give a, a an animal as a prize um, to someone under the age of 16. But as long as they're with an adult or a family member, apparently that's fine. Well, that's not fine. And I accept that this is not a, a, a huge issue. Uh, I accept it's not an issue that's possibly at the forefront of everybody's minds, but as Councillor Sturgis has said, it's important enough for a number of my residents to write to me shortly after the election. Uh, and I know that other members on this side of the chamber, at least, have received similar communications as well. Um, this is within the government's gift. If it's an issue and it's such a small issue, let's change the law. You guys are in power. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. So I will now. Ask the monitoring officer to conduct a vote by a show of hands, please. Thank you. Can I please ask all members in favour of the proposal to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that that proposal has been carried. Thank you. So we now move to the motion, uh, the bond Riverside Culvert motion. May I invite uh, Councillor Abs to formally move the motion, please? I move the motion in my name. Thank you. Um, may I check that we have a seconder for this? I second this, Chairman. Thank you very much. I advise that we uh, will not debate this motion this evening. Um, and in accordance with Procedure 12.6.1, this will be referred to the Environmental Advisory Group and the executive for consideration as the details of the motion falls within the remit of the executive. Um, but I will invite uh, Councillor Adrian Abs to speak to the motion for up to three minutes. I'm not sure we need three minutes. The motion is fairly straightforward. Um, it's actually very much in line with uh, Lib Dem principles, inclusion. Um, consulting with people and getting them involved in the decision-making process. So it's a little bit disappointing that you weren't willing to chat about it and give a direction to EAG, um, at least, but so be it. Um, for me, all it really is asking for 
is that we uh, create a critical path committee so that the issue that is um, prominent in all our minds to do with the culvert uh, near Tasco it, it has some local and um, knowledge brought to, to bear on it. It really doesn't interfere with the normal day-to-day -day business of the council. It just gives us an extra consultation point. But I will point out that most people probably are not aware of just how much of the Newbury area drains into this culvert or is, uh, is if, um, yeah, gives, it, gives water into this culvert. It, it pretty much covers most of Spenham land. It stretches all the way to Northcroft. It includes all of Victoria Park and it goes um, up towards Shore House. It is a huge area and we have had many, many, many developments over the past few decades. And if you look at what it asks you to note, it does just that, to note that there's been lots and lots of things going on. So it uh, should be quite straightforward. You know, a, a critical path committee, if you like, should aid the decision making, should help unblock any problems that we're going to face in terms of being able to then go forward and develop things like the LRA or Bond Riverside, as it's now called. And um, I say it's it's in line with um, what I remember as being Lib Dem principles of, of inclusion and uh, consultation. So I hope when it comes to EAG, I look forward to attending and uh, debating at that meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Abs. Um, we have, uh, would Councillor Stuart Gawley uh, like to uh, speak to this for two minutes? Yes, please, yes. Um, thank you. Uh, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Abs, uh, for raising uh, this topic to Council. It offers me an opportunity to give an update on uh, this topic and also to clarify a couple of points. Um, firstly, uh, just to start with the clarif clarifications, uh, your motion alludes uh, to the Tesco culvert blocking uh, the development of Bond Riverside, uh, which, which it doesn't, um, which it doesn't stop us from doing. Uh, the Council is aware. Uh, that this is an existing constraint which can cause water to back up during flash flooding and we're committed to finding a solution. Any development on Bond Riverside would be assessed in accordance with national and local sustainable drainage, uh, which is SUDS policy, and cannot be judged in light of an existing problem if it is not making the problem worse. In fact, any development implemented in line with SUDS policies would have a significant uh, beneficial impact downstream of the Tesco's culvert as it would inevitably reduce runoff from Bond Riverside. Development should not be constrained uh, by sustainable drainage. Every development should include sustainable drainage, and it should be a fundamental part of, uh, of the design to reduce surface water flooding, improve water quality, and enhance the amenity and biodiversity value of the environment. There is, this is no different for Bond Riverside, and its development will be taken forward with sustainable drainage as a fundamental principle of that design. Uh, whilst West Barks Council were not the flood risk authority for ordinary water courses such as the North Coff Ditch back in the 80s when the culvert was introduced, the Flood and Water Management Act does now mean that the flood risk uh, from the ditch falls to West Berkshire as the lead local flood authority and not the Environment Agency. The Environment Agency do, however, administer government funding for flood alleviation on behalf of DEFRA and the Regional Flood and Coastal Committee, and that can be used uh, for alleviation purposes. So by way, by way of a quick update, uh, council officers have had initial discussions with the Environment Agency with regards to a bid for flood alleviation funding in the London Road area, and we will be pursuing this. Uh, and as set out in our council strategy, the regeneration of Bond Riverside is a key part of our commitment to building a prosperous and resilient West Berkshire. Thank you, Councillor. If you can summarise, please. We want to achieve this in an open and collaborative manner uh, with all stakeholders concerned, and we are working towards this. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this will be referred to as mentioned before. So we will now move to the motion on cost of care. May I invite uh, Councillor Alan Macro to formally move the motion, please? Uh, could I move my motion, please? Thank you. Um, may I ask, uh, may I check with uh, Councillor Heather Codling uh, that you're seconded? Uh, yes, and I'll reserve my right to speak. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I advise that the Council will debate the motion this evening in order to uh, facilitate the discharge of business in accordance with the procedure rule 12.6.3. Um, and I invite uh, Councillor Alan Macro to speak to the motion, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. 65% uh, of next year's council budget 
will be spent by the People's Directorate, mostly for children and family services and for adult social care. Uh, this spend is forecast to increase dramatically in future years as demands on both services continues to rise. This is both in terms of the numbers of, of children and adults needing services and then the costs of providing those services. The, the care for a single child or an adult with learning disability can cost several hundred thousand pounds per year. This uh, means that the services that all residents use, such as emptying bins and repairing roads, accounts for a minor part of the council spend. The government, the government financial contribution to this council has fallen dramatically over the last decade or so, meaning that more and more of the burden has fallen on the council taxpayer. Also, many uh, adult social care clients who have comparatively modest savings for property ownership have to contribute, contribute to or pay all of their care costs. This council's social care budget is also seriously affected by the low rate of continuing health care awards by the NHS. Barsha West CHC awards are the lowest in the country and have been for some time. A very significant amount of care is provided by unpaid carers, mainly family members. Many of these are children, which I believe is a national disgrace. These children's education and life chances are seriously impacted by the number of hours that they spend caring for their parents or siblings. There was a commitment from the Johnson government back in 2019 about reforming uh, the funding of social care, though this is largely about reducing the financial burden on clients and their families. However, nothing concrete has come from this. The current situation is unsustainable and needs to be fixed urgently. This motion asks our MPs to request the government to urgently reform the funding of social care to reduce the burden on the council taxpayer, properly fund the care given by caregivers, and to ensure that the shortfall in care workers can be filled by not unduly restricting care workers' visas. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we will move into the open the debate. So those wishing to make have questions or comments. <clears throat> Councillor Apps. Yeah, thanks very much. And uh, Alan, thank you very much for bringing the motion forward. It's uh, something I said I would do at the previous meeting, but you've done, you've beat me to it. And I'm grateful that you have, because until we get funding reform in this area, we're all kind of wasting our time a lot of the time. So thank you very much for bringing it forward. Thank you. Are there any further questions, comments? No? Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so I will now uh, ask the... No, sorry, I'm yeah. asking uh, Councillor Heather Codling to uh, speak. Uh, yes, this... this uh, thank you, Chairman. This follows neatly on from previous debates um, about the high needs block. The costs are going up incredibly. Um, the number of people, come, children coming through with additional needs. Um, it, there is just such huge pressure on our budgets and I would just like to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. My invite uh, Councillor Macro to speak as the mover of the motion, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I don't have anything to add, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. So I will now ask the monitoring officer to conduct a vote by a show of hands, please. Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of the motion to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any against? And any abstentions? Thank you, Chairman. I could confirm that that motion has been approved. Thank you. So we will move to the Thames Water motion. May I invite uh, Councillor Stuart Gormley to formally move the motion, please? Uh, they're hereby moved. Thank you. May I check that this motion has been seconded by Councillor Nigel Foote? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I'd like to second that and I'd reserve my right, please. Thank you. Fine. Uh, and uh, I advise that the Council will debate the motion. This is this evening in order to facilitate the discharge of business in accordance with the procedure rule 12.6.3. So I uh, 
invite uh, Councillor Stuart Gawley to speak to the motion, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, let me just start by saying some a few things. Uh, Hayley, David, Ian, Lynn, Dawn, Malachi, Martin, Joe, Neil, Clive. Just some of our residents that have been living with extreme foul uh, water sewer flooding for months and not for the first time. Newbury, Shaw, Stanford Dingley, Great Shefford, East Garston, Bucklebury, Eastbury, Lambourne, Upper Lambourne. Just some of the places across West Berkshire that have been affected by foul water sewer flooding for months and not for the first time. The Kennet, the Pang, the Lambourne, the Winterbourne, the Thames, just some of our rivers and waterways that have had to survive foul water sewer, sewer discharges for months and not just for the first time. Can you see the pattern here? Can you see the monumental travesty that is being left to unfold before our very eyes, before our communities, before our children and before our wildlife and ecology? This is 2024, not 1824, but for our rivers and our communities, it doesn't feel like the 21st century. For too long, this dire situation has been left to meander, along with no resolution. Our enforcing agencies being stripped of resources and teeth to do anything about it. Local MPs paying lip service to it and voting against legislation to change this catastrophic paradigm. It must end. Thames Water and Industry need to be held to account. They must be held to account. I'm not talking about the tanker drivers, the project managers, the customer service agents, or the network managers. They deserve our respect for doing a difficult job with both hands tied behind uh, their backs. We must be angry and focus this energy and this severe disappointment on the Thames Water CEO and their corporate leadership team who allow profits to be taken out whilst our residents and the bill players are expected to foot the bill. We must be angry at those in positions to fund our enforcing agencies properly to allow them to do the job we so desperately need them to do. We must be angry with those who make our legislation or those who fail to in this instance. We must ask them to do better. We must demand them to do better for our residents, for our precious waterways and for our wildlife. But we must take this opportunity uh, to thank charities such as Action for River Kennet, various volunteers, flood wardens and campaigners across West Berkshire who have tirelessly campaigned to ensure this topic stays at the forefront of this agenda. We all have a part to play and I want to be able to ensure we as a council play our part to enable and facilitate work that Thames Water and other partners need to do to restore the health and security of our waterways, our communities and our residents. Whilst I and others have had informative meetings with Thames Water stakeholders, they lack the distinct commitment that this situation will be improved in the timescale it so desperately needs. Uh, and this is why that I hope everyone across this chamber will support this motion this evening and ask for more action to be done and sooner. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We move to Councillor McKinnon. Thanks. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, excellent performance there, Councillor Gurley. Um, uh, uh, some of what you said is, is is not correct, but but really, I'm I'm just very concerned that this is the way that the council is going to be doing business from now on. Do you guys need to do a motion to council before you do anything? If you want to do it, you're in control. Get on with it already. Lambourne Parish Council wrote to Thames Water last week. <laughs> Get on with it. Do it. Thank you. Have uh, Councillor Barnett. Thank you, Chairman. Members, um, I'd just like to uh, remind Councillor Gawley, uh, it was quite helpful listening to the various parishes that you mentioned. Unfortunately, you overlooked Mill Lane, Newbury, uh, Bishop's Green on the West Berkshire side of the A339, and also Crookham South. They need to be added to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Culvert. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I very much welcome um, this motion and I'm pleased that you're suggesting that we should contact um, the CEO and others. Um, we've put forward motions in the past where we've suggested this and we've been told it's not the role of the council to do those things. And I think it is. So I very much welcome this. Um, I would also like to thank all of the flood wardens, Pang Valley Flood Forum, um, Lambourne Valley Flood Forum and the Newbury Flood and Drainage Group. And I know there's a new group that's been formed in the Lambourne Valley in recent days, specifically looking at sewage. Um, I'm flood warden for um, East Dilsley. We have raw sewage in the streets at the moment. We have toilet paper, we have sanitary towels, we have condoms on the streets and it absolutely stinks and it's disgusting. Um, and privatisation of um, water companies has been an epic failure 
Yeah. It should never have happened and it needs to be renationalised. Um, there are rumours that Thames Water will go bankrupt in April. Good. The sooner it comes back into public ownership, the better. And then we will have democratic control. And as we all know as councillors, this is a problem we face regularly. Things like social housing, we've got no control over sovereign. Things like this, we've got no control over Thames Water and we need it. We are democratically elected and our residents come to us and expect us to be able to help them to get solutions to problems. And we can't on so many of these issues. We should not be living with this sewage on our streets. Absolutely disgusting. Um, I've been to public protection this week and I've asked them for some information um, that we can give to members of the public about the health risk. I've asked today for one of the streets in Hampstead Norris to be closed because cars are driving through at speed and they're sending sewage onto people who are walking past um, walking their dogs. Um, the largest shareholder of Thames Water is a Canadian pension company and I doubt very much that they give a toss about what's happening at the moment in West Berkshire or anywhere else across the Thames Valley area. Um, so I thank uh, Councillor Gawley for bringing this forward and we uh, very much support it. Thank you. Councillor Wilder Stanley. As ward member for uh, Lambourne um, and as chairman of the Lambourne platform, um, there's nothing to object with this, but why aren't you just getting on with it? Last week, I had a meeting with the executive director of, Th of Thames Water. I also met with Lord Benyon, who's one of the DEFRA ministers. And we're doing something. All you're doing is talking about it. Mm. So just get on with it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to intervene here. I did explain that I look at this as a discussion point and play. and we're not here all the time for the executive. I'm here for the councillors and this full council meeting and I really welcome the debate. That's why I allowed this to go proceed and, you know, I, I take your point. I've heard it several times. Thank you. It's noted. Yeah. Councillor Vickers, Tony Vickers. Chairman, thank you. Really following on from what you've just said, it's to Councillor McKinnon in particular, but to a significant chunk of the main opposition. What we are doing by having these motions debated in council is showing our public the leadership, generally speaking, across the council. It's not just with these votes, although we could have. We can do everything with the system that we have, the executive system. To my mind, it's not democratic. I've been against it from the very start, but we're not allowed to change it. Yeah. All of us are elected to play a part in the leadership role that a local council can and should play. It's not down to an executive function to lead. Yeah, it it, we, lead the, we, lead the, we lead in the sense that we do the administrative job. Yeah, we get on with it. What has tonight done to stop us getting on with it? Nothing. But it's shown the people out there that we all have a role in that leadership. And I'm blown if we should carry on with this forever without giving this more of a try. And I'll, I'll be very interested to see what the reaction is of the public to the way we have changed the way this council performs. Yeah, a point of information, Councillor, because I actually believe you can change back to the committee system. Thank you. Um, we we have uh, Councillor Nick Carter. <laughs> Thanks, Chairman. Um, it, well, I'd second it. Have a word. <laughs> I wasn't planning to talk. It was just the probably about the fourth mention of the just getting on with it. Mind is, I'm new to this, so I ha could have this wrong, and I have made a couple of mis mistakes before. I'll be honest. Um, parish councils, I understand, can't just write to Thames Water. My parish council, Stratfield Mortimer, has, but we had to have a quick dis discussion, pass a motion to get the clerk to do it. So this seems the same similar as i understand it so I, but i could be wrong and probably in this debate probably about 40 percent of it has been talking about getting on with it so we hadn't said that so many times maybe we could have got on with it by now so <laughs> <laughs> thank you councillor carter we have councillor abs yeah I, I obviously don't want to kind of dwell on this but um it, 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 I'm finding it a little bit hard to accept the positions of uh, Councillor Vickers and, and others saying, oh, yes, yes, I'm really interested, including yourself, Councillor Goldman, it's really interesting to have debate. There's only one thing we haven't debated, and it, was, it doesn't happen to be a Lib Dem motion. So I'm sorry for it, pointing out the obvious, but it, the proof in the pudding will be when we see a proper debate on other people's motions, not on your own, 
do better. You know you can. I know you can as well. Thank you, Council Abs. Are there any other further comments or questions? So we will move to the close of the debate and invite uh, Councillor Nigel Foote to uh, speak. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, I'm going to make a, a Brexit comment. It's not a Brexit rant, but it is a Brexit comment, because when we were part of the European Union, uh, the European Court of Justice could fine the United Kingdom for sewage discharges, and it did actually do that in 2009. Once we left the European Union, this was seized on by the government, and very soon, in about October 2021, Parliament passed a, a legislation to allow the water companies to discharge raw sewage into our rivers and into our seas. Two, over 250 Conservative MPs voted for that motion, including the MP for Newbury, Laura Farris, uh, and I think that should be borne in mind. And more recently, the Office for Environmental Protection, in their annual report for 2022 to 2023, stated the government remains largely off track to meet its environmental ambitions. And it went on to say, the government must speed up its efforts. Many policies are in the early stages or are long awaited. In some areas, right policies are in place, but now must be implemented quickly. And this is one of those instances, because as my colleague, Councillor Gawley has said, and I know members across the chamber have walked around their wards, inspected raw sewage in people's front back gardens underneath their houses. And this, as Councillor Gourley said, in 2024 is completely unacceptable. Yeah. So our residents in Clay Hill, Lambourne, all the places that have been mentioned uh, this evening do deserve better. And it is something that this council can do and it can carry some weight. If that message is transferred to the ministers to actually say, in the words of the opposition, get on with it and get a strategy sorted out and let's get some uh, decent res resolution for our very long suffering residents. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. So I now invite uh, Councillor Dewitt. Stuart Corley to speak to the of uh, the motion. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. I think first off, I think it's so disappointing to see uh, how the role of full council has been diminished uh, by members opposite. We've already started to make contact with Thames Water, and we have been doing so. But this motion brings the weight of full council behind our words and the opportunity to speak as one. So it's very disappointing to see that role being diminished significantly this evening. Yeah, yeah. However, I'll leave you with a few points. What we have is a cocktail of incompetence. Let me read you some, some bits, shall I? Thames Water bosses admit it can't meet 190 million April debt. Sky News, Thames Water owner, owners pile group with debt, Financial Times. Thames Water lobbying government to let it increase bills. The Guardian. Plus, Environment Agency funding cut by 50% over the past decade. Cut back stopping vital work on river pollution and floods. The Guardian. Environment Agency prosecutions, 6% of the level they were a decade ago. Byline times. So what does that add up to, folks? That adds up to this. Newbury residents limits visits from sick grandchild as road plagued by sewage, ITV Meridian News. Sewage hit residents face years, in fact, I would say decades, uh, without fix. BBC News South. Lambourne villagers fed up with walking through sewage. BBC News South. Newbury sewage floods like living in 18th century. BBC News South. That's where we are, folks. That's why we've brought this to full council, so everyone can hear this, everyone can have their opportunity to speak to it, and I am very disappointed that we continue to diminish the role of full council this evening, and that's why I hope you will all support this motion. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. So I will now ask the monitoring officer to conduct the vote by show of hands, please. 
Thank you, Chairman. Can I please ask all members in favour of the motion to please raise their hands? Thank you. Any opposed? Or any abstentions? Thank you. Um, Chairman, I can confirm that that motion has been approved. Thank you. We will move to uh, agenda item 22. Um, and th uh, we have now qu members' questions. Question. question. Sorry, question. You have one. Do I read it? Yes. Oh, <laughs> hey, sorry. I thought that we don't use it. Yeah. You, uh, my apologies, Councillor. <laughs> my apologies, Councillor Bowick. Very, you're quite correct. Thank you. So, as presented on the screen. And we're asking for an um, answer from Councillor Brooks. Before I answer this question, thank you for good debates this evening. Very important debates, essential they came here and were fully debated, apart from one which we referred. Councillor Burke, the leader and now myself have been involved in a series of meetings with other local authorities over the last nine months. Been going on almost since we took over. I understand that previous council leader before May last year also attended some of those meetings to enable the Berkshire Prosperity Board to be set up and receive the funding pre previously received by the LEP. The Chief Executive and I have kept the executive members updated and the Chief Executive tells me that he has kept the opposition party updated on this quite substantially as well as it's come into being. The Berkshire Prosperity Board, when formed, will be agreeing a set of themes to help deliver our ambitions across the whole of Berkshire. We're at the very early stages of discussing how to develop and progress these themes into specific delivery plans, including setting up a business board. Um, you've heard earlier in the evening, as I brought the report forward, uh, how we were establishing this. It's been agreed by the Berkshire leaders that all our constituents members will be updated when these delivery plans are developed further. And, and, and I'll give it an extra assurance that I'll make sure, assuming I remain in this position, I will make sure that the Prosperity Board reports back here a great deal more than your LEP, Local Enterprise Partnership uh, Representative, used to report back. I'll do better than that. And I'll, I'll remember, you, I'll remind you, it was Councillor Alan Law for several years, and we heard very little about it in this chamber. We're going to do better than that. Have you got a supplementary, Councillor Byrne? Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, of course, Councillor Alan Law is not here to respond to that. No. So I'd like to make that clear. Um, thank you. I'm pleased to hear you committing to report back, Councillor Brooks. Very happy about that. Um, government issued guidance on the 4th of August and, and a letter to uh, the author uh, local authority leaders went out at the same time. LEP funding is going to be withdrawn next month. The, um, the, 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 the equivalent uh, um, uh, announcements have already been made by, I think, everybody, uh, everybody but us and Slough. And, and, and I just wonder, why are we so far behind the other authorities? I don't think we're behind at all. I think it's a, no, we're not. No, we're not. It's all cut. Look, I was at a meeting where this got agreed by the Berkshire leaders only about, uh, what, three or four weeks ago. A crikey. The, but we've met as soon as we can after that meeting with the Berkshire leaders, with the chief executive, sat in a room and said, this will work. Now take it back to your authorities and get it approved. And that's what we're doing. We ain't late on this at all, Councillor Boak. I can tell you that. Thank you. Right. And on that final note and enthusiasm and debate and discussions. I uh, thank you very much for all your attendance and uh, your contributions to the meeting. And I therefore close it at 9.90, that we call it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Please rise for the Chairman of Council.